Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Clint Armistead. I'm the sales manager here for North, Central, and South America at Isograph. Thank you for joining us today. Just as a quick point of introduction, Isograph has been creating and improving engineering software now for over 32 years. Um, our headquarters is based in the UK and we also have an office here on the fringe of Silicon Slopes here in Alpine, Utah. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you today, David Wiseman. He will be conducting our presentation. Uh, he is our lead technical support based in the UK. David has been with Isograph for over 13 years and has worked with thousands of organizations, helping their employees become conversant with our software tools. So today, David will be giving us a high-level overview of our, not our network availability prediction, hopefully, <laughs> which we have on the slide, but he'll be giving us a high-level overview of our SAP and Maximo portals. So if you find this training useful today, or you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at www.isograph.com. And without any further ado, I'm going to turn over the controls to David to uh, show us what he's got prepared for us today. Thanks, David. Thanks, Clint. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, so today we'll be taking a look at the um, enterprise resource uh, project portals, the ERP portals, in the availability workbench software suite. So for anybody watching who's not familiar with the availability workbench suite, this is basically a suite of software tools uh, that use Monte Carlo simulation for various types of analysis. Uh, RAM analysis for analyzing the availability, cost and production of a system. Uh, RCM cost, a tool for assisting with reliability centered maintenance of helping you to select and optimize uh, a maintenance strategy. Now, when I talk about these tools, things like AvSim, like RCM cost, one of the things I often bring up is the means of getting data in and out of these analyses. Where is the raw data for these analyses going to come from? What are you going to do with your findings once the analysis is complete? Now, this is, uh, for a large part, where the ERP portals come in. So we have two main portals in Availability Workbench, uh, and these are designed to connect with the uh, SAP uh, maintenance management system and the Maximo system. Uh, one, of course, coming from uh, the SAP organization, the other from IBM. So the principle behind these two portals is actually very similar. The idea is that from within Availability Workbench, you can connect to your ERP system, whether it's SAP or Maximo, download uh, information from that system and then use it to build an analysis primarily in RCM cost. Uh, and you can do this using the data that you've collected in those ERP systems, uh, hierarchies of locations and assets, failure modes, uh, the resources that you use for your maintenance, and of course, the maintenance strategies themselves. Now, um, the, the, the overall purpose of doing this is that you can take the information that you've collected in the real world from your system about its, uh, its failures and its maintenance, about the resource usage, feed that into an RCM analysis, optimize the maintenance strategy in the software, and take that optimized strategy and then through the portal, upload it back into your ERP system to be implemented in the real world. So um, maybe I'll start by taking a look at the SAP portal. So as I've mentioned, the SAP portal allows you to connect to SAP PM, download and upload information. Now, um, obviously, uh, a lot of ERP systems, most ERP systems are very, very large. Uh, big organizations have a lot of assets. They collect a lot of work history, have very large maintenance strategies. When you're downloading information from your SAP system, uh, naturally you will want to filter that data. You don't want to download everything. It could take forever sitting there waiting for all of that data. 
So uh, I'll start by taking a look at some of the portal options. Find that in the SAP options menu. So here, obviously I'm not gonna go into detail on every little field here. I think that would take a little too long. But I want to give you those, just the flavor of what you can do through this dialogue. Um, one of the main things you'll be able to do is just tell the program what data you want to download from your system. Now uh, this dialog actually, this tab, is giving us a good idea of some of the information that we can read from SAP. Of course, some of the primary things are going to be your technical objects. These are your locations and equipments. Things like your material or your spare parts, the labor, the people actually performing the maintenance, and naturally the maintenance plans the actual maintenance strategies themselves, these are the things that we're going to want to optimize when we move the data over to RCM cost later on. So here you can choose what data you want to download. On some of the other tabs, you'll be able to filter that data, filter on the different types of spares you want to download, filter on the location and equipment categories, filter any work orders based on date. So there are many, many filters that you can enter here and um, there is even an element of customization because you can uh, use the uh, field designations from SAP itself to select a specific field and build a custom filter on that field for when you're downloading the data from that table. There are also upload options as well, uh, telling the program about how and where to upload data back to SAP. And then maybe I'll just skip to the last tab, where you can give the program information about how you're going to connect to SAP, telling it the location of the server, giving it information like uh, your username. And as you can see here, uh, the portal will support connection via the NetWeaver web services, and it will also, uh, it will also support single sign-on as well. So we might be thinking, well, there's a couple of things you might be thinking, firstly, um, every time I connect to SAP, am I going to have to enter all of this information all over again? So the answer is no. Um, you can enter this information and save it. Uh, save it as part of what we call a template file. Uh, and that brings us to a second question. Well, I might have multiple engineers uh, all working with availability workbench, all pulling data from SAP. Am I gonna have to send my SAP uh, guru out to enter all this information for them at all of their different workstations. Again, the answer to that is no, because when you save these portal options, uh, the template, because it basically it's a file on disk, you save the template file and you can basically just fire that off to everyone who needs it. So when they start their SAP session, they can go to the SAP options menu and they can just open an existing template and pull up all of those options straight away. So once all of your options are in, you can then click on download SAP data. That will primarily bring up the portal options dialog. Uh, it will give you a second chance to select the data that you want from your SAP system. So I can turn things off, turn things on, so it's basically my last chance to tell the program that maybe I don't want or do want certain things. And then when I click OK, the program will prompt me to log in with my password. And then when I hit log on, the program will begin the download process. So this actually brings me to quite an important point, a point in fact that might be so important that I perhaps should have led with it. Um, I don't want to give people the impression that the SAP portal or the Maximo portal is a direct interface through which you can edit your ERP system because that's not what they are. Naturally, uh, we wouldn't want to give uh, that kind of access to your system through the software. That would, of course, open you up to all kinds of problems potentially with users being able to change things on the fly when perhaps they shouldn't. What actually happens is um, the program will connect to SAP or to Maximo, read what's there based on the filters you've given it, and then create what is essentially a snapshot of that data within the software, which you can then save in an offline project file. 
So it basically copies that information into a project, which you can then work with offline. And then later, if your user credentials allow it, you can upload any new or edited data back to SAP or Maximo. So you can't play around with the data in Maximo or SAP directly through the software. You're working with a snapshot, which you can optionally upload back to SAP. Again, if your credentials, if your permissions allow. So I've shown you there a little bit about how to connect to SAP and how to start the download process. What does the data actually look like once it's in SAP? So, uh, sorry, once it's in Availability Workbench. So I'm going to open uh, a sample file, um, which I should have here, SAP Demo, and open. So on the left, we have the project tree. That's listing everything that the uh, program has downloaded from SAP, or rather almost everything. I'll come to that shortly. But you can see we have the technical objects, which represent the different locations and equipments that you have stored in SAP. Um, we have had comments from users that, in fact, our portal is actually a more uh, user-friendly, a, a more pleasant way even, to view the data from their SAP system than the SAP GUI itself. Because here you can actually graphically see the relationships between locations and equipments, whereas maybe that's not so easy uh, through the, the, the SAP GUI. So here we have the locations and equipments. We can double click on those and we can get uh, a look at the properties of these objects. Users of SAP hopefully will kind of notice that the, the dialogues here have been developed to be as similar as possible to the layout of the data in the SAP GUI itself. So I've got general data for an equipment, the location information, the structural information, again, hopefully laid out in a way that should be familiar to users of SAP. So if we go a little further down, we've got things like uh, the catalogs and the catalog profiles. Um, incidentally, it's the catalog profiles in SAP that are going to give us our failure modes or failure causes for our CM cost later on. Um, further down, we can see things like labor. So, you know, I can open up one of these labor categories and I can see, uh, you know, where this person is, what type of labor they provide. And uh, further down again, we have the spare parts or the material. Again, if I double click here, we get some information like uh, the price, the cost of purchasing one of these spare parts. Um, but perhaps the most important thing that will come down from SAP in the context of a maintenance optimization is the maintenance plan. The maintenance plan, of course, is, uh, is the maintenance strategy for a system or a subsystem or a piece of equipment, and that's going to contain information about the maintenance tasks that you're going to perform to improve the condition of that system or equipment or whatever it is. Again, I can open one of these up and it should look kind of like what you would expect to see in the SAP GUI as well, where you can select a maintenance item, uh, take a look at that item and its properties, even take a look at the task list at the bottom. So here I can go and look at the various operations that make up that task list and make up that maintenance plan. So rather cryptically, uh, I said earlier that that hierarchy on the left will show you almost everything that's coming down from SAP. Uh, there is one other thing that's coming in as well that we can't necessarily see immediately, and that is the work history. Uh, that is the work orders, the maintenance orders, the corrective maintenance orders uh, for all of our equipment over a period of time that we define in our portal options. Now, in fact, this plot that you can see on the right, the performance plot, is essentially a histogram of that work history. So at the moment, what it's showing me is that <clears throat> most of the work costs from corrective and scheduled maintenance is coming from the clarification plant. Uh, and I can actually click on that and drill down and see, okay, well, within the clarification plant, 
most of the cost is coming from biological cleaning and I can click again and you can see on the left as I'm doing this that hierarchy is drilling down automatically as well so I can go all the way down and see where these various uh, work orders are coming from and they seem to be coming from this electrical pump so how could we take a closer look at those individual work orders well, I can do that by going to the grid view and I'm going to change the grid view layout so I'm looking at the uh, maintenance orders and that's going to show me a list of maintenance orders for the selected piece of equipment and it will have all of the dates I can even double click on one of these and see some of the properties the various dates and so on so we've downloaded information from SAP uh, into the SAP portal and availability workbench and we have our locations and equipment we have failure mode information maintenance information resources and even historical work orders as well so what are we going to do with all of that information so what we can do is convert that data into an RCM cost project now I'll switch briefly to RCM costs and just talk about it at quite a high level. Now, RCM cost uh, is a tool that uses Monte Carlo simulation to help you optimize a maintenance strategy. Basically, it's helping you to identify what type of maintenance would be, for example, the most cost effective and what is maybe the most cost effective interval at which to do that maintenance. So, for example, is scheduled replacement more effective or is condition monitoring more effective if i do schedule replacement how often should i do it in order to minimize the cost this is what rcm cost is all about now i won't go into any more detail than that uh, because uh, we do actually have a full video on rcm cost uh, there'll be a link to that either on the screen now or in the description uh, for this video so uh, if after this video you want to go and take a look at RCM costs, that will give you a bit more context for what we're doing here. But suffice it to say that for that RCM cost analysis, for that maintenance optimization, most of the raw data that we need can actually come from SAP or from Maximo. So how do we go about transferring that data? Well, the process is relatively straightforward. We can just select one or more objects or even select everything using the, drop, using the checkbox at the top. And then bit by bit, we can say to the program, build master data in the RCM cost module, just using this button at the top. So it's transferring that data now. And that's complete. Uh, then I might move over my RCM cost causes as well. Uh, and I can even move across my, RC, uh, my um, maintenance plans. Now, uh, the maintenance plans will become what we call task groups in the RCM cost module. But basically, all that information is going to be transferred across. So we can go over to RCM cost now. And we can see, uh, if we look here, there's our clarification plan with the various objects listed beneath them including uh, any failure modes that have been transferred across from the uh, catalog profiles. Further down, we can see we've got things like the effects, the spare parts. Uh, further down, we can see the labor. And down here, you can see we have the task groups, which are basically our maintenance plans. Now, there are a few gaps we might need to fill in once this data is in RCM cost, simply because SAP and Maximo can't provide us with all of the information we need for a complete maintenance optimization. So, for example, we might need to uh, kind of fill out some information about corrective maintenance, about how long that takes and the resources we need. We might, might need to provide a bit more detail about the cost of the effects of a failure so those sorts of bits of information that aren't provided by SAP or Maximo, we can simply fill in in RCM cost, either by hand or by importing from another, uh, another source. 
So once we've sort of built our analysis in RCM cost and we've optimized our maintenance plan, optimized our task groups, what can we do then? Well, at that point, we can go back to the portal and you'll find there are options for transferring master data and maintenance plans back from RCM cost into the SAP portal, at which point you can either in bulk or individually upload that data back to SAP. Again, I can't stress this enough. If you're not allowed to uh, read or write or, or create data in SAP normally with your regular credentials, you won't be able to do it here either. Because again, you're logging in with your regular SAP credentials through our portal. So it won't allow you to do anything that you're not allowed to do normally. Uh, but if you are allowed to do so, you can, again, either one by one or in bulk, upload information. So for example, you could upload uh, your maintenance plans, your updated, improved maintenance plans back to SAP. Um, now, there was one other thing I didn't show there, uh, and that's how you can make use of the maintenance orders. Now, I, I mentioned there that the maintenance orders uh, are downloaded from SAP. They come down with the uh, dates um, when the maintenance order was raised and when it was completed. Uh, and we can use that information as part of our analysis. So let's go back to the plot and um, Let's find, again, a uh, reasonable uh, set of data. So, okay, so there we have a uh, pump with a number of maintenance orders associated with it. So you can see them listed here. So what I can do is I can click on this calculate time to failure button and the program will calculate the time to failure for each one of the work orders, assuming that those work orders have valid dates associated with them. You can see some of them don't, which is why the program wasn't able to calculate anything. Um, but for everything that has valid dates, the program will calculate a time to failure or a time to replacement, depending on whether it is a corrective work order or a uh, scheduled work order, a planned work order. I can then take that data and transfer it to the Viable module. Now, the Viable module is a, an extra module that is supplied along with RCM cost, and it allows you to do a historical uh, failure data analysis. So here, for example, you can see uh, the program has created the Viable data set. It has pulled in the information about the work orders, whether they are suspended or right sense of data, replacements, or failure points, points where a piece of equipment failed. It plots them on a probability plot, and then basically we can do a line fit to that data and get an estimate of the expected failure behavior based on the history of that equipment. And this is something else that we can feed to RCM cost as well, because we can go into RCM cost and for any one of our failure modes, we can say to the program, okay, this failure mode is governed by this set of failure data. And you can see that just pulls in the result of the viable analysis, and that can become part of the simulation when you're optimizing your maintenance later on. So, to kind of summarize, what we can do with the portal is download information from SAP or from Maximo. Maybe we'll take a quick look at the Maximo portal as well in a moment. We can download information from our ERP system, information about our equipment or assets, about the maintenance that we do on those assets, about the resources that we use, and even the work history for those assets as well. We can use that information to build an analysis in RCM cost, our simulation tool for maintenance optimization. There, we can optimize our maintenance strategy, then feed that new optimized strategy back to the portal, and then optionally push that back up to SAP or to Maximo, whichever system you're using. So maybe to, to round off, we'll 
have a little look at the Maximo interface as well, just to demonstrate that the principle is basically the same. So here, instead of dealing with locations and equipments and uh, labor and maintenance plans, you're dealing with locations and assets, with failure classes, uh, crafts, PMs. So, of course, the nomenclature is different, but the principle is basically the same. Here, we can set up options where we can connect to a Maximo system, download information from that system, and then use it to build an RCM cost analysis, as we showed earlier, and then optimize the maintenance plan, push it back into Maximo. To give you a feel for what that might look like, we have some sample Maximo data as well. So there you can see your locations and assets. On the right, again, just like in SAP, we can get the work orders. So we can use that to build, work, to build a, a kind of historical failure data analysis to supplement our maintenance optimization. So again, you have that same cycle of data going on, information coming down from Maximo, being pushed across to RCM cost. We fill in a few gaps, optimize the PMs or the job plans, and then feed them back into the Maximo portal to go back up to Maximo. So that's an overview of the ERP portals in Availability Workbench and a little bit of how they interface with RCM cost. Again, for a bit more background on RCM cost, there is a link uh, to a, another video where we cover that module in a lot more detail. Um, okay, so uh, Clint, if you, do you have any any questions or any, anything you wanted to add? Yeah, so one of the questions uh, or one of the things that I see uh, on a somewhat regular basis is um, different ERP systems aside from Maximo and SAP. Uh, and I'm sure that it's going to be dependent on what system they're using, but from the isograph side of the equation, is, is it possible to set up this sort of um, API, maybe not a portal like this, um, but are there other ways to pull data from other ERPs to do the same type of analysis in RCM costs? Um, yes, I would say there is. Um, so the availability workbench program executable, so the little sort of uh, executable from which the program runs. Uh, within that, there is an application programming interface, an API, as you put it earlier. Now, um, this can be used uh, to basically build a, a customized dashboard that, where you can connect to third-party data sources and push data in and out of availability workbench, in and out of RCM cost, for example. Uh, and as a proof of concept, really, um, Historically, our own Maximo and SAP portals began life as, uh, as tools or interfaces that were built using that API technology. So um, yeah, certainly using that API, you should be able to connect to other external data sources, other ERP systems, and set up a data exchange with RCM cost. I, I think that about answers what I, I have for now. Um, I, that, that was excellent, David. I really appreciate you taking a few moments with us no this morning on this topic. Uh, just to conclude, uh, there is our contact information. If you have any questions about this or any other of our software modules, I would encourage you to reach out to us. Also, we do offer a free trial uh, of our software. And you can sign up for that on our website as well. And, and we encourage you to do so. It's a no obligation, no credit card required uh, test drive of our software. So again, we thank you for viewing our video and considering us as a potential solution uh, for you or, and your team. If, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you all for attending today.